Welcome whoa, back, guys. Whoa, whoa. So it turns out the uh, sizing of everything is very off. Let's sort this out live on stream, like true pros. Live on stream. Fantastic. Yeah, we're live. Okay, so we do apologize for that, guys. Um, a small issue. Now, you did miss Fatal Wombat taking game one with his hunter against the warrior. He ended up just outdrawing and. It just worked. It just worked out for Fatal One that very, very nicely. Now we do see some huge damage here coming from Fatal onto the face of a GG. Now that Stampeding Kodo is actually a really strong draw from the Web Spinner for a GG. You can take out the two-two. However, it's going to use up all of his mana for this turn. However, he leaves just two damage on the board for Face Wombat, and he will have himself a couple more than that. What he was really liked there is to top deck a um, a knife juggler for sure. We see the Kodo come into play though, and it's going to hit that two two, pummel it in the face, and give us back. Well, and give Face Wombat just the two one on the board. However, there is a lot and. Emphasis on the lot of burst in Fatal Wombat's hand right now. He's just got to wait an extra turn here. He j I think here the play is Implosion and into Echoing Ooze because that double power overwhelming and the Doom Guard are just going to come in in a couple of turns' time and really do some damage. But that was probably the worst possible outcome for him. We'll wait and see here what goes ahead for a GG. Hopefully that is the end of the issues. My computer is making considerably less noise right now, so I hope that's that's sorted. I do apologise for that, guys. Now he seems to be hovering over the power power overwhelming, and I am not too keen on that move. I like the echoing ooze; it's so much easier. But he's gone for a double power overwhelming here. He's going to go for the ten damage to face. But I mean, that's still using one damage off of lethal with the Doom Guard. So, from a personal perspective, I think a GG might have this in the bag almost. But of course, you He's have got to consider two, two one damage minions on the board. But you have to also consider that Hunter doesn't run any form of heal. And I mean, if he plays Animal Companion here and he gets a taunt, it's not quite game over, but it's game changing. And he's going to trade the 1-1s one in, which I'm absolutely fine with. And then we could see the Animal Companion. The only issue with that is that it doesn't curve very nicely. But we do see a taunt, which is going to stop him from going down to 1 health this turn. No matter what happens. Well, unless there's a Soul Fire, which only discards the Echoing Ooze and then he plays Doom Guard. But I, I'm not, I'm not going to count anything out in this game because so much has happened. Now we see Lethal present for a GG. We would have seen Lethal if that was not a taunt for Fatal Wombat. Now, we do see the Direwolf Alpha, we see the Doom Guard. It's gonna be close. Now the thing is here Oh and the quick shot draw. Get 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 top decked. So what the play here is to trade the 3-3 three, three into the 2-2, two, two, quick shot the 6-3, and then you you slyly sort of sip on your whiskey and you say, have a piloted shredder for good measure. Mm. Takes no damage to face and it's it's pretty much exactly what a GG needed to get back into this game. And this should be should be one all in this series here. So we see should the quick be. shot come out. We stick with the uh, the curse of the live stream. Seems every single match we watch on live stream goes two one. It does actually, yeah. I forgot about the curse of the two ones. We'll see here. This, this he has still to trade anyway. It. He has to trade. It. He trade. does trade it. Thank you. I was getting a little bit worried there. And we see the pilot is shredder. Pilot is shredder. Yep. I mean, the lost tools trader has some merit to it, but the pilot is shredder is a definite amount of damage next turn. And we see abusive sergeant now. Well, that's not going to help him. And he's put himself into lethal range, which does actually matter because he had the hero power go. anyway. There's a concede. Lethal Wombat concedes, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is one all between a GG and Fatal Wombat. Now, we do apologise again, therefore, 
the very small technical difficulties. But what we did just see there was uh, the strength of this new Zulok, which has come out with the new Black Rock Mountain. Um, we did actually see an Whoa. MJ boss there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we only saw Implosion from GVG being a different card there. But that was a very, very strong showing from the Warlock. Uh, and that means now that um, it's a probability that it'll be the Hunter again from Phase of Wombat. We don't know the last deck here of... Oh, sorry, we could see the Warrior again here from a GG, or we could see his third deck, which we don't actually know. We don't know the third deck of each player here. We know two of their decks each. And it's the final game we go, and it is Gul'dan of Fatal Wombat against GG's Mage. All right, I'm just sorting the stream out. Because that's, that's a for... really bad hand for a GG. All right, don't, don't tease them about the game. It's coming up in just a moment. I'm, I apologize. I can't fix this without being on the scene, so... So we have a Zulok Warlock from Fatal Wombat against a GG's Mech Mage, it seems. So another battle. That's a much better hand. We did see a 575 from a GG for his curve. Sorry, a 574. However, we now see a nice one, Mirror Entity, Frostbolt, and Piloted Shredder in his hand. However, oh, Fatal Wombat has an Argent Squire, an Echoing Ooze, a Haunted Creeper, the Coin, Defender of Argus, and a Knife Juggler right now. So that could be a very, very strong hand for Fatal Wombat here. I have actually got the stream of the game up now. <laughs> okay. I apologize so. for that. Everyone just seen my face in massive for about a good 10, 20 seconds. So now we have Noyotron here. Hello, hello, hello. And Ryan's favorite card in the game. I wouldn't call it my favourite. <laughs> it's just the most annoying card ever, as the name would suggest. Now he doesn't want to play the knife juggler yet. Nope. When the haunted creep comes out, I'll be two free knives if he plays the next turn. Well, he doesn't actually get the doesn't actually get it killed. He could. It could be killed here, but I highly doubt it. But the knife wouldn't therefore count. Never mind. So we see now the Tinker Town technician. I think we've seen being... two different players, but you know, carry on. TTT to do Tinker Town tech. Now this is my main deck. This this Mech Mage. It's the same. Well, it's probably going to be a very similar deck to what I play. Maybe I'll pick up some stuff. And we do see the Imp Gang boss here in the face of one bat a warlock. It looks like he's going to coin into it. Now I don't like that play because of the fact that the four four takes it straight out of here. We do see the Defender of Argus play, which is actually far better than the one that I saw. Yeah. And I didn't see this one. But it does mean he's going to lose a Divine Shield on his 2 2 taunt. But, you know, leave the 2 2s for dancing. We're playing Hearthstone. I wondered when the next bad joke was going to be. <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, in and out up. <laughs> like a CSGO player. So we do see Mirror Entity, which isn't great, purely because of that mad scientist sitting there in the hand of a GG. He doesn't want that mad scientist to have a secret in his hand. Because obviously that cannot be drawn. So, I'm going to bring some uh, updates from other games around the brackets. In the round one, Upvoter has beaten DJ 2-0. Wow. Now, that's not something I expected. That wasn't all. something I expected, no. Uh, also, uh, he, well, that means he'll go face uh, Ibarra in the second round. Uh, Red Child has been put out, Red Chid, sorry, um, to Spain Bala. Spain Bala will now face Maynard TKOX in the next round. And in oh, a second round match has been played. Charlie Witt has beaten Mayday HS 2 0 and will now head into the third round where he'll have a bit of a wait because they're still waiting on the first round game there. And I believe. Oh, no, there's one more. Uh, Replicant has been put out 2-0 to Lil Yens, so he'll be also waiting for a bit for his match. And that's it for now. Thank you very much. You'll have a job and match of the day before you know it. <laughs> we see three knives coming out here for Phase of Bear after the play is finally made where he changes his Haunted Creeper up into two Spectral Spiders. Now that secret is another... Oh, sorry, no, it's a duplicate. Now that's not the card I was expecting. I... Probably not going to be much use to him right now. Well, I mean, the, Anything, pilot... well, the only thing is Pilot Shredder. It is. Unless he wants to somehow, well, not somehow, unless he wants to play the Mirror Entity here and a Snow Chugger, 
Uh, because as soon as <laughs> so your chug is you, <laughs> we we could see you know if he duplicates the snow chugger, brilliant. You know he's got two more two threes that freeze him, his opponent even. Mm. Now we could see an imp gang boss, we could see a defender of Argus, we could see a few different things here from Fatal Wombat that could be mirror entity. So we'll wait and see what qu what happens here. We see a sea giant in the hand of Fatal Wombat. Now that's not a card I was expecting to see in this warlock. You, you could say sea giant. <laughs> I'll be back in a few hours, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, sorry. I thought I'd try my hand, but it didn't really work out too well. well. There's the duplicate coming out into play. Onto the Clockwork Gnome. Now that's why I didn't like him playing a Clockwork Gnome. That it's time. not ideal. I mean, it makes and it bye very... bye to the chugger. <laughs> chugger, chugger, chew. Bye bye. And we see another echoing ooze here. These knives are going around like some kind of London school. That was bad. I apologise. We're gonna see probably a piloted shredder here into maybe a ping. Yeah, I don't know. This turn's actually pretty rough for the GG. I mean, while he hasn't got anything on the board, he has a fair few cards in his hand. And that's that's some sort of advantage. He's lucky that three of the minions only do one damage. That's what I'm going to say. Indeed, yeah. However, it's going to be more than one damage because he has no clearing for these. And I mean, if yep. he plays that party Treader, that 3-2 is just going to say bye-bye. In fact, he could... I think he's just trying to <coughs> stop a bit of the hit to face. Uh... However, now, the Defender of Argus in Fatal Wombat's hand could be played straight... Oh, he's going to play the Sea Giant. Is Maybe he? you might want to... Yep. He's going to play the Sea Giant. Okay, I expected... I expected him to play the Voidwalker at first, trade a 1-1, and then Sea Giant, but you know. Quite possibly. However, I was more expecting the Defender of Argus play to taunt the 2-4, to make it trade into the 3-4. And it would have been left to one health, and it would have created an Imp as well. But... You know, what do I know? We see he got now... lucky with the knives again. Knives are just insane here. We're going to see another little imp pop his head out there of the imp game master. And a couple more hits here from the knives. Just, you know, feeling it. He's feeling it right now. And I think this is game for face of wombat here. Unless a flame striker is played by a GG, which it is. And it's a fireball instead. This, ladies and gentlemen, should be game for Fatal wombat. Taking this series with two very, very aggressive decks here with the Hunter earlier on. And we're going to see a little bit of BM here from a GG. He's going to fireball himself and fire blast himself. And that's going to be the game. Fatal Wombat takes round one, 2 1 against a GG. And that is GG. It is a GG. Right, back to Face It. Hello. Face It time. So, that was quite a. Uh, Quite a close game, but the last one there was actually quite quite over quite quickly. Oh, yeah. um, it's a bit of a shame, you know. I wanted to see a little bit more going on there, but apparently we couldn't we couldn't see much more there, um, which is, as I say, a bit of a shame. Now we do almost have a full bracket of round twos, so I will go through those now whilst we try and see if there's a game to be watched for you guys. So Fatal Wombat will go through in the first half of the bracket to play E. Rossi of Russia who got a buy in the first round. The next two guys Aiktu Baiktu has also got a buy and will play Razverd. In fact that game is more than likely going on right now. I'm not 100% sure. Basic Ball SG's very own Rakaseth Head will be facing off against LB Dutch Boy who's beaten Mateus 2-0. We then have Ibarra against Up Voter who knocked out, I would say, one of the favourites for this tournament in DJ666 of Spain. All of the S's. And Richard went out to Spain Bala, as Ryan was saying earlier, and will face Maynard TCOX. Ryan, were you... Yep. Dejecting? We have a game? No, we're not going in just yet. Okay. Um, I was just looking to see if a few people were on, but they're not playing just yet. Okay. So we have Average Joe heading through, and he, he sorry, will face the winner of Goth Girl, SG's very own 
Mad Deck Maker against Eric, and then we have Bersicki against Dream State, which should be heading to a conclusion very, very shortly, and the winner of that will face Grease's very own Stard, or Stade, not quite sure. Sorry, Slade, Slade, or Slard, not sure. We then have Matty against Tuban, which will probably be coming to a conclusion very soon, because they both got buyers in the first round. We then have Camillo, and he will be facing Vitaly Synfax, who put out SG's very own one mouse. So, one SG member out. However, Camillo will be hoping for a bit of revenge for his teammate here against Vital Synfax. Right, we're going into Ibarra's game. I've just been informed it's nil nil. Um, so, we're joining it a bit into it. Uh, he's against Upvoter in the second round. Um, okay. We see Upvoter playing a mage and Ibarra a druid, a, a golden druid at that, so. Okay. And let's swap. I'm going to have to update the names. Bear with. Okay, so I'm just going to be joining the battle very shortly here, guys. So, we have Upvoter. He's actually a rank 10 right now, which is pretty impressive for this early on in the season. So, it seems like a pretty good mid game hand here for the druid. And we see a charge coming out here. And that secret, just so you know, on the mage is a counter spell, and that's not going to be triggered for a long time if I bar a hand sticks like this, because he ain't got no spells. We see a Pirate to Shredder, a Fireball, and a Frost Spell in the hand of Upvoter, which quite a decent amount of burst there, but it's just not quite enough. It's they need some kind of something, pretty much here. There's something not quite right with that hand, you know. He needs some draws here, and a mech mage, which we have to assume that this is, just doesn't get draws. Just doesn't really get draws. And so we see a frostbolt coming out there, and the shredder. We see a force of nature, but which, which will actually get countered by the counter spell when it comes to a possible play of that. So we see a taunt this time. I like the taunt much more there for my barra. Are we going to see a trade into this planet of Shredder? We're not. Okay, so he's going to leave the Taunt to do that job. And we have quite a nice curve here for Ibarra. Double planet of Shredder next turn is an option. The Fireball coming out now for Upvoter. And he does have the ping. And he can keep that Flame Cannon in his hand. And take full damage. Well, and give full damage, should I say, to Ibarra's face. Shave Nectramus into hand now, which curves perfectly. With Sludge Belcher. And Sludge Belcher, probably my least favourite card in the game. Now we I always forget about <laughs> the death rattle of it. The little one, too. Yeah. So we see Think the Fireball. Think game and no. Shh. Fireball probably going into the 3 5 here, I'd imagine. Then the 4 3 taking out the 1 2 and the Flame Cannon onto the Shade of Nax Ramus to stop that shade from growing. Uh, pesky shades are an issue to everyone as far as it is concerned. However, he might still just be thinking about here, well, I could trade the 4-3 in and ping the 3-5. However, he is going to probably go for the right play here. Well, not the right play, but the play that Your I saw. Play. I would assume. So, yeah, ping he does is. indeed. And he goes for the ping to face as well. So that shade is no longer. Merely, it is living in the shade of what it used to be. We see an Innovate here, which isn't going to be too much use. However, it's going to proc the counter spell. And here, a cheeky little hello there from Ibarra. And we're just going to see all the piloted shredders on the board right now. You know, it's a shredder party out there. I mean, I can hear the music from here. <laughs> and Sorcerer's Apprentice isn't going to come into much value, but, you know, it's a card. And I like this from Upvoter. I really like this from Upvoter. He's making. Ibarra have to make the trades. Oh! Oh! Now, there's that lethal. He's got exactly nine, dam nine mana for it. I think that's lethal, ladies and gentlemen. I am pretty sure that's lethal. 10, 24. 24 no. damage. Well. No, he's on two health. No, I know he's sorry. got two damage. There it oh, is. Got it. There it is. It's exactly lethal, ladies and gentlemen. Ibarra taking game one with the druid against the mech mage. I mean, we joined that game halfway through there, but I liked what Ibarra was doing. He was putting the pressure on, saying to the druid, You. You guy. You, Mr. Tree, over there. You're going to be the one that's having to trade into my machines with your own machines. And then all of a sudden he's like, Yeah, but have some trees and some roars and stuff, and bye-bye, Mr. 
well, Mrs. Wavy Wand or whatever you want to call it if you're going to be a child like I am. Basically, so, yes. Yeah, we see the druid there countering Mech Mage pretty nicely, not quite as you would usually imagine. I mean, we didn't really see many spells there really from, from the druid. He was also lucky that he pulled that Innovate. I think that Innovate is going to be, you know, MVP right there, because that oh, managed sure. to proc the counter spell, which meant that the uh, Force of Nature Savage Raw combo was possible in the first place. And we are going to be heading into game two here of these two players battling it out for the place in round three of Cynical Gaming's first ever Mega Monday Conquest. I'm going to have to find some kind of voice changer to go Mega Monday Conquest or something. That kind of really did it. There. That kind of did it then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brian Blessed in disguise over here. We see the quick shot of the Houndmaster and the Kizan Mystic in the hand for the hunter here. So you see two different changed classes and we see two golden classes here. Now I love golden classes. I love them. I love that little cre the little border around the crests of the two hero powers. I just love that. I don't care about the animated faces and stuff, you know. Give me those golden crests all day long. It's like a blue it's like a blue Peter badge for uh Hearthstone players, I I'd like to see it as. But we do see a mind control tech in the hand of the warrior here, which I find interesting. So he draws a sludge belcher and skips his turn. Now we do see a very, very nice early curve here for Ibarra. He's going to hope to pull into something like a 4 and a 5 drop over the next couple of turns. But for now he is sorted with either a mad scientist on the board or a haunted creeper. I think I personally prefer the mad scientist play. But he's going to go for the Haunted Creeper. And we do see the direct counter for all of these little minions here with the Fiery War Axe in the hand of Upvoter. I do actually quite like the tech here of the Mind Control tech. No pun intended. I mean, if he Fiery War Axe is that 1-2 right now, he's going to create the two one ones. There's then going to be a Mad Scientist and a Web Spinner possibly or probably played by Ibarra. So then there's going to be four minions on the side of Ibarra. And in fact, I prefer him here, not hitting him with that. Okay, but never mind. My play there was completely invalid. And we see just a little tickle onto the face of the warrior, who appears to be playing the Armsmith. Oh, now that owl could well be used onto that one for, but he's decided against that. Instead, he's going to Give it a little tickle with the Haunted Creeper, a Mad Scientist, and a bow to the face, or an arrow to the face, should I say, for the warrior to remove any armor. And just as the Shield Stamp comes out as well. We're going to see a coin into a Sludge Belt, which is no doubt about it right now. Especially given the fact that the uh, Eagle Horn Bow here can't get buffed without him attacking something into it, and otherwise it's just going to break. Now... The Knife Juggler here is actually a good effort. Ooh, now... Okay, this is an okay way of going about it. If both of these hit faces, there's a lot of punishable... ...things. Okay, we're going to see the 2-2 two -two into the 3-2. And now we see... ...a bit of damage more to the face. We also see that trap there for the Hunter, by the way... ...is an explosive trap. Oh! Oh, mind control tech! You filthy mother trucker! However, the uh, the knife didn't quite go where I would imagine Upvoter would have hoped it would. We'll see here what the play is. I mean, Cruel Taskmaster here would have been really good, um, but he decided to hold on to it for now. I mean, it's sort of like a... it's like a a guide for where the uh, knife juggler should go, almost. Okay. Snapjaw's not going to be too nice here for Ibarra, unless he manages to find some kind of a hound master for it. Which is a possibility. It's a possibility, however, whether it happens or not, we'll wait and see. Now there is obviously the explosive trap, but I like what he's doing here. 
going to trade into the 3-3 and bring out another weapon, and then he's more than likely just going to steady shot and end his turn. Now we do see Shield Maiden coming out this turn, which is pretty nice for Upvoter. And there it is indeed. Now, oh, there is that Houndmaster I was talking about. We're going to see the Snapjaw into a Kill Command to take out the 5-5. Five five. Ibarra does lose a little bit of burst from that, but I wouldn't say it was a bad play at all. So we see a Shredder here, quite possibly. Oh, this does leave open a few quite nice plays here for Ibarra, but he's going to go for the Execute. Good play. Playing around the Houndmaster here. It's going to be one of the bigger minions that is possible to play for Ibarra. And one of the biggest targets for Upvoter to hit. See a lovely, dazzling night sky on the Golden Animal Companion, which falls into the hand of Ibarra here. And the Shredder is taken out. And brings out the Fire's Ringleader. So we see Leok, and we see a little bit of a taunt going onto it here. So we have 9 damage on the board from the Hunter. And not a lot in response here for the Warrior. I mean, yeah, that takes out the 4 6, I suppose. So I may well be wrong. And we also see a Sludge Vulture. So shut me up. Please, shut. So. Yes, now Upvoter, of course, does hold the lead in this game. Upvoter is 1-0 up after his win with... Sorry, no, 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 sorry. Ibarra is 1-0 up with his win as Druid against the Mage. So you see a steady shot here, and the 4-3 attacking. Sylvana's now into the hand of the Warrior. He's... Oh, freezing trap. But that does mean the taunt comes back up, though. So, I mean, well, hmm. Is he going to do that into the, yeah, he's going to do that into the L, so it's a bit more of a tricky trade. Oof. That Hunter's Mark isn't great. Okay, so he's going to trade the weapon in and the knife juggler. Hits the 4-3 into the little widget left over, the little blob of slime. And we see now a 4-2 and a 2-2, and now we see nothing on the board, funnily enough. Now I think that this is where the warrior is going to start to come into his own here. He knows that Ibarra is not going to have any form of heal in his deck, and it's very unlikely, unless he's playing a very mid-range hunter, that he's going to see a taunt even. We do, however, see Sylvanas. Uh, sorry, a Savannah here. And. Well played being given out there by Ibarra. I don't know if he thinks it's over for him or whether that was just an accident. Oh, we see Garrosh. That is. lethal? It is indeed. So it is indeed lethal and it is. A win here for Upvoter against Ibarra. And the curse of the 2 1 returns. It is indeed. And we're going to go into that third match now. Yeah, we're going to wait for it to jump in. Um, I'm just going to say quickly I apologise for any anything that's going on, uh, going wrong. Um, it we're learning. <laughs> I am at least. And it should be better. We're going to try and improve it as we go on, but if not, it'll be better for next time. It will. For sure. So. Now we see here two Zulogs. She's just dead. And. Interesting hands for them both.
So, the Voidwalker coming out here for Ovota. As expected, it's a one mana cost and there's no need to keep it in your hand. And he's going to match it. Exactly the same. Tickle my Voidwalker, the name of the game. Exactly. One, three taunts all round, boys. Now, this isn't a deck I've played myself. Uh, I haven't touched Warlock just yet. Um, but it's something I'm interested in, so we'll see how this matchup goes. We will. And I mean, Warlock's one of my preferred decks, so this should be interesting. I mean, I prefer the Control Warrior. Uh, sorry, the Control Warlock. But, you know, I know my way around a bit of a Zulok. I was there when Undertaker was pre nerfed. Taking me back to those days. And. Here we see a bit of a conundrum, I suppose, for Ibarra. Bit of a slow hand. It's gonna tap. I don't like the tap. I much prefer you silencing the 2 4 to stop any more imps coming out. It's definitely hmm. a choice, but. Probably not the best one. No, I think that's the best way to put it. And okay, yep, that's that's acceptable, I suppose. We're gonna see a lot of imps. Some of them golden, some of them not, but we're not gonna discriminate against the non golden ones. <laughs> and we see a silence now coming down. No we don't, sorry, we see a tap. I thought he hovered over the owl there. But I don't know. I'm not liking this hand for my bar. I'm not liking the playstyle either. Not a personal thing on him. Just a personal Oh, that's wrong placement. No, actually, no, it's not. I'm misplaced. Yep. Good placement. Could have done it better myself. And we see now the Nerubian egg. Nerubian egg, egg who can attack. Do you see that indeed? Now, the knife juggler here might be a decent play. Uh, however, I'd go knife juggler and then I'd go into silencing at last the 3 2. However, Ibarra seems to find a different way of doing this. He silences instead the 1 2, which is now just going to trade straight into the owl. Okay. So, this is. I don't like insulting people. Well, not, I'm not even insulting, I'm just merely delivering my thoughts, and that's what you do as a caster. My thought so far is that there could have been a few better plays here. I mean, if you can imagine right now, if Upvoter had one single knife juggler on the board, so much would be going on for him right now. <coughs> and that Lothar proving perhaps vital, actually, to the survival here of Upvoter's board. Because otherwise they could have been a knife juggler into an implosion. We all know that implosion rolls four when you've got board control. So, perhaps a bit of a sticky situation right now. And it's coming to the point where we're going to see a defender of Argus onto a knife juggler. Oh, and it's hit the wrong one. So you can now trade the 3 1 into a 4 3. Oh, if you'd have hit any other minion on the board. Now we're going to now surely see the 3 1 traded into the 4 3. And we even see a sea giant on. Ooh, up voter. Surely you played the sea giant first, sir. He's not going to. I mean, it only costs him one more, I suppose. And it actually does get the imp out. So well played up voter there, actually. I hadn't realized that. He's going to play the Dying Wolf Alpha. He's going to trade into. The Warlock, and now he's going to play the Sea Giant. Very, very well played there by Upvoter. I hate playing with all of these tokens. I like, I hate watching with all these tokens. There's just too much for me to handle. And I don't see a way out of this now for Ibarra. And nor does he, I'm sure. Ibarra pulls out of the game. Upvoter goes through 2 1 after Ibarra took the first game. And now he has to go home. Perhaps That's a little bit of grief. Out. So let's have a, a refresh of the uh, the bracket while we wait here. Um, last I seen, Ransword had gone through two one, 
um, against yeah. Ike to Bike 2. Ike to Bike 2, yep. Um, I don't really know. Maynard TKO, TK, uh, COX beats Bain Baller 2-0. Um, and he'll be waiting, waiting for the match between Average Joe and Eric to finish. Fatal Wombat so has one. gone through 2-0 to zero against E. Rossi, by the way. So Fatal Wombat will be playing Razverd in the round 3. That may well have been E. Rossi not showing up, or it may have just been a really quick 2-0 for Fatal Wombat. You also see Basic Ball is going up against LB Dutch Boy still. We've got Ibarra who has just beaten up... No, sorry, Upvoter who's just beaten Ibarra. So Upvoter will face the winner of Basic Ball and LB Dutch Boy. As Roman was just saying, Maynard TCO X will face off in the third round against the winner of Average Joe and Eric. Eric put out Goth Girl 2 to 0. We are now seeing a lot of 2 to 0s on people that I would say had a very, very good chance of going far in this tournament. We've seen Goth Girl and we've seen DJ 666 both taken out 2 to 0. And I mean, I, I just. Shock. I don't know who's going to win this one now. I, th I mean, I have my I have my thoughts over who might get far in this tournament now, um, but I'm not going to say those. I'm going to wait and see what happens. So I'm not you just don't right. want to be proved wrong yet again. I don't. We have Dream State playing against Slade, which has possibly, well, is possibly coming to its conclusion very, very shortly. We see Chuban, who has beaten Matty 2-1. To go up against the winner of Dream State and Slade. We then have Camillo fighting for revenge for SG's Rakaseth Gaming against Vital Synthax, who knocked out one mouse earlier on today. Mayday HS was beaten 2 to 0 by Charlie Witt. And then we have our final few games here where we have Arathur, who is against Selenux. Right now, that should probably be over very, very shortly, considering they both had buyers in the first round, but we'll wait and see on that one. Westbrook took out Ur2 in the first round and is placing is sorry, is facing up against IDX3M right about now. Critex earlier on won two to zero against Freaks. Replicant was uh, lost zero two to Little Gens. And then we have Noidia who beat Baumin round one, one to zero, so a possible no-show there. Uh, he's, play he's facing up against Muzmas, and then we have Tom Staff facing up against Tom to Shatters. So we have a few games in the third round, a few games waiting on a second round tie, and a few games still stuck at the second round. That's just the way these tournaments have to go. Um, I, I have my eye on a game, I'm ready for it to begin. As okay. soon as it does so, I will inform you we jump into it. We will indeed do that. I mean, both so players guys, are in the menu, so it shouldn't <laughs> be too long. What we want to see from you guys now, though, is uh, what I would personally like to see you guys putting in the uh, chat to the stream your favourite so far Black Rock Mountain card. Now, you've had just under, uh, well, about half a week now to play with the final installation of the series. Your card's like Nefarian out there now. Uh, and a, a few others. I can't remember exactly what came out in the last week. But, you know, what is your favourite BRM card so far? And what kind of decks have you managed to forge with the Black Rock Mountain cards thus far? I mean, I know uh, there's been a few bigger uh, Twitch streamers and professionals going out and having a small go with the Dragon Paladin. And that's something which I've taken uh, my own route on. And I'm excited indeed to see how my Dragon Paladin matches up in both tournament play and also in um, ladder play as well. It's done pretty well for me so far, and I mean, my favorite card is yet to be decided. I'm going to be uh, very in the middle, sitting on the fence, getting a sore bottom. I would I would so, love to join in, but um, I think I've unlocked one Black Rock Mountain card so far. Most likely. So, uh, <laughs> I need to catch up. Too busy playing ranked games and climbing that ladder above you. Yes, yes. However, not for long. Not for oh, long. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. So, we are currently waiting for another game to go into. We have... I was waiting for a specific one, but it looks like I might just jump into a different one. Okay, that would nope. be... Nope, nope, we're going into nope. it. They're just about to start. And that game will be between... 
Razword and the Fatal Wombat. So we will be going back Razword to is a. I, I seen him in the chat. Well, he's in the chat there currently. I don't, he hasn't said anything, but he's there. Um, so I thought it would be nice for him to see himself on stream uh, and for you to commentate on him and criticise his play. Uh, also, We're here for you guys, you know? We, also, we um, I've seen him play. Well, we've streamed him in the past, uh, and I believe he won, so... Okay. Um, you have a better memory than I do. Well then, <laughs> that's that's a new new comment I've I've never had before. Yeah, they're both preparing to battle of friends, so it's not going to be long. We'll be going into this game, guys. We do know that Faithful Wombat is running a hunter deck. A and a, yeah, Zulok. I, I think believe that's it's a Zulok. Zulok, I think, and then maybe a warrior. It might have been a warrior. My memory's worse than yours, so. Well, you remember that we've already streamed <laughs> Razverd, so I'm not going to say anything. Uh, Razverd so far then got a buy in the first round and has beaten Ike 2 by 2 How can I keep forgetting his name? Ike 2 by 2 That's just so fun to say. I know it is, isn't it? It's one of those games. That's one of those names that I'm just like, oh, I like that one. And we've seen Fatal Wombat already in the first round go two and one against Dejiji, uh, and then he got two and zero against Erosi, who we're not sure uh, what happened there. Um, possible uh, no-show, but we'll wait and see on that one. And now we are going to see Fatal Wombat of Dutchland. Dutchland. Dutch Dutchland, not Deutschland. Deutschland. Dutchland. The, the Netherlander. So, the Netherlanders. Uh, we're going to see the Netherlanders against the Grex. So and let's go. And see how this one goes. We have Fatal Wombat, ladies and gentlemen, on the top or bottom of your screen. Uh, Razvert on the top. Razvert at the top of your screen and Fixel Wombat on the bottom. I'm glad I chose the right way around for you. It. So we have a priest against a druid battle. Get your resident sleepers out, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see from the card back here, Razvert has hit legend before, so I'm looking forward to seeing just how well he can do here with the priest. And we do see a double North Shire Cleric hand for Razvord, as well as a Power Word Shield. Okay, so we do see the coin into the world growth here, and that pretty much should tell Razvord that there is a Shade of Naxxramas on its way to the board. And we see a Power... Ooh, okay, I'm intrigued now. Mind Blast in the hand of Razvord. Now... I I I I don't know what to say to that. As you can probably tell by my I I I I eyes, <laughs> you know, you can tell, you can see it in my eyes. Um so you're gonna see Keeper of the Grove is gonna come out and silence that Norsha Cleric, I think. Yep. Well no, no he's gonna do two damage. Oh, he's gonna take it it out doesn't actually shade. make any difference what way he chosen that there. No. It does mean now that this loot hoarder does get ultimate value, taking out an infinitely large shade of Naxxramas, and he gets to draw for it as well. So got a nice orc and eye into the hand. He does indeed, but there isn't really much that he wants that to combo with right now. Not just yet, no. No, the and there's the other Norsha cleric. It is indeed <laughs> the most annoying card ever. And we see the swipe now coming down on. Oh, I like the swipe play. Do I like the Druid of the Claw play? Without seeing the hands, I probably do like the Druid of the Claw play. Even seeing the hands, the Druid of the Claw play is pretty good. Oh, he's gone for a charge on it. Okay. I'm not okay. Sure hit the Acolyte of Pain. He's hit the Acolyte of Pain, which I fully agree with. However, now there's a slight issue here that he. That uh, Fatal Wombat get uh, sorry that Razvord gets a draw off of the uh, one three Northshire cleric. I'm not, I'm not keen on that play there by Fatal Wombat. I think if anything, I'd have preferred the uh, swipe into trade. Now we're probably going to see a Dark Cultist come out here, and we see a Resurrect as well. Okay, I'm liking this a Resurrect deck from Razvord. And this is the first time I've ever seen it played in a deck. Now we go see a probably... Oh, oh, he got that just about right there. Had to, of course, trade into the North Strike Creek before he played the swipe. 
And now you're going to see that 4-3 going to face as well as a hero power. So we now see the Orkanai. We're probably going to see a heal onto the 2 2, which is actually a bit of a fool. You know, it's not actually a heal. That's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt in the morning, afternoon, and evening tomorrow. And we're going to see possibly an Empathorus in here. I don't mind the Scenarius play here, but it doesn't actually play around the um, possible. Oh. Now, that Innovate was possibly a mistake. Oh, no, no. Okay, I see what's happening here. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, now this is going to make this Thorison very hard to get rid of for Razverd. Hmm. Shall wait and see. Resurrect coming. Oh, dear. And Lothab is not going to actually do anything. I don't know if... Uh... Fatal Wombat. Oh, there it is. It stopped the Wrath actually being played. It did indeed. Possibly going to see a... Um... Ooh, this is a bit of a tough play. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so we see the scenarios come out here. So you know, Thorison in the hand of Razverd, and I've just noticed something here. We do see a Prophet Villain in hand as well for Razverd. Okay, I want to know where this game's going right now, because this seems very, very intriguing. It's a tough matchup. It is, and it's also very interesting when you're playing with Prophet Villain and the likes. Indeed. Now we're gonna possibly see a powered shield here. It does come out, which is put. Oh, now that's a big card. Light bomb into trading into the five A is a real possibility here. It's almost a shame that what that 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 the uh, holy smite only does two damage rather than the three that would be needed to take out the five A here. But we're going to see the light bomb, we're going to see the trade take place. It's going to take out the Lotheb, so... Now we're going to see a two mana Shredder into a hero power. No Keeper of the Grove because he wants to keep it for the silence. All well, for the two damage, both of them are useful. And send you now for Razvert. Nothing truly in his hand to take out that 4-3. Thorison here is probably the best play, purely because there's nothing else to really play. Especially to try and take out that 4-3. As we see in the hand of Fatal Combat, uh, sorry, Fatal Wombat now, a possible trade for the 4-3 into the 5-5 and a Wrathful One to draw a card. A Savage Roar now, so we're probably going to see a combo deck here, and they're indeed a big game hunter for the possible Prophet Velen, which will come out very, very shortly. And that will make that Mind Blast deal 10 damage, ladies and gentlemen. 10 damage for one mana. That's pretty impressive. Now, though, Razver down to 17 health. Pulls out a Death Lord, which isn't going to be fantastically amazing for him here. However, there's a big play at hand here, possibly, for Razverd. He's got the Prophet Velen into a Mind Blast, which does 10 damage, and then a possible shield from the Tazdingo Senjin. However, that's a very aggressive play, and I would say that that's showing your cards too early in the most literal of senses. We shall see. I mean, I'd say you definitely want to get that Senjin down. Um, the 3 health counteracts the 4-3. 
Uh, of course, there is the possibility of it getting silenced by a Keeper of the Grove here. Now, if we see Prophet Venom come out, then the big game hunter is going to come down. So, four damage Holy Smite now. And we could see a Holy Nova. Oh, now this is going to be tricky. We see a Mind Blast as well now. That's a lot of damage, but maybe a bit too much. It's going to be bye bye to the 7 7. It is. That Prophet Velen is not going to last on this board for very long. Big Game Hunter says, No, it is. Not in my town. Sorry. Takes it out, and now there's a Shade of Naxxramas here. And he's going to actually just Hero Power. He's not going to silence the 3 5 or deal 2 damage to it. He's got plays for days. Trade here, and then a perfect Holy Nova, I would say. That is a really, really strong play from Razverth. This is a bit of a resident sleeper battle. Um, but it's going now possibly s slightly still in the favor of Fatal Wombat, I'd say, here. He says anything you can do, I can do the same. The Pulls better. out a Sludge Belcher too. However, I'd like to have seen the Keeper of the Grove onto the Sludge Belcher. And now yeah. we just see a load of taunts now and the AoE heal from Razverd. We could see this, and then we could see a circle of healing into a sludge belcher, into a heal to face. No, we're just gonna he's just gonna say, you know what? Try and find my face through this wall. Now that is a great wall of China. That is just so obnoxious. That yeah. <laughs> that is my most feared opponent. Oh, rather. we see the combo here, but it's gonna have to be used defensively to try and take out the board of Ra of Razvert here. It's going to focus down onto that Death Lord, get rid of that, and it's an Ancient of Law, which I think he would have liked to have seen kept. Because now, well, where's his jewels going to come from? However, we are just going to see... Oh, I don't like that play. Did he use the face damage there? Yes, he did. Okay. Maybe I do like to see that. Never mind. Ragnaros, the main party, or one of the two main parties, in Blackrock Mountain. Coming out now, spitting his fireball out randomly and hitting the 5-5 five, five minion. I think this is game right here for Razverd. I'd have to agree. I mean, the Keeper of the Grove could silence the 3-5, but what's it then going to do, you know? It could eat a fireball for the druid. Oh, he's only going to deal 2 damage to it? Oh. Now, where was the silence there? He didn't silence. No, that's why I'm... That's interesting. No, I, I, I think here you just got a Velen's Chosen. Heal your face, and then you can always circle of healing for good measure. You know, get that five... So, five... Five! I'm turning right into a Midlands or me. Uh, are we going to see possibly a five circle of healing? Are we going to see it? No, we're not. We're going to see Ragnaros pound in the face of the druid. I mean, and should be game. Oh, Sylvanas could. No, Sylvanas couldn't. He won't do anything. Won't be able oh, to do Sylvanas anything. could. The 8-8 eight eight could hit Sylvanas. Oh, Still they the trade the Ragnaros. <laughs> Even the Sludge Belcher here would almost be good for Fatal Wombat. Because there's no controlling where that Ragnaros is going to hit. Now, is he... Well, the thing is, if he looks at the possibility of trading here... Well, actually, the ability to trade here is probably the best idea. If he trades the 5-4 into the 5-5, five five, then there's a chance that he takes the 1-2 because of the way that the Death Rattles activate in order. However, we're going to see a circle. And the Death Lord. Perhaps he's, he's just going to go balls to the walls here, I think. Indeed he is. Go to face with the five. Heal and his now face. Fingers crossed. RNG. Yep. Yeah. Down. There bye, we bye, go, bye, ladies bye, and gentlemen. Razverd with the Prophet Velen Priest takes a one to zero advantage here against Fatal Wombat in round three of Syndical Gaming's first ever Mega Monday Conquest. Brought to you by myself, Wesley Chili Bird, and Ryan. You've seen. Three games now. Well, this is going into the second game of the third. We've seen two ones in every single one so far. Um, 
for my voice's sake, I'm hoping this is a short one. And we're going to see Razford on the Druid against the Hunter of Fatal Wombat now. And that is a pretty decent hand for Fatal Wombat. So who do you fancy to take this one then? This matchup is very draw dependent in my opinion. Um, and looking at the two draws right now, Razverd does have some removal, and he also does have a big taunt. However, that hand of Fatal Wombat could be enough. We see the two web spinners, and if those web spinners give him two king crushes, we know where this game's going. And it's straight down the swanee for Razverd, if you didn't know. We don't see a wrath come out. Okay. I think that here Razverd is just biding his time, waiting for the swipe play. So he could coin into the um, Shade of Naxxramas. He could just Wild Growth and play the swipe next turn, which looks like the play that he's going to make. So the Wild Growth comes out. And another no web spin. play that, my friend. Oh, now this is going to be a little bit tough. This is going to hurt. Oh, and another Wrath. I tell you what, Razvod is getting some pretty decent draws right now. The one issue he may face, though, is whether or not he wants to wait another turn, take out the 1-2 this turn with a Wrath, or even the Shade of Naxxramas next turn, and then do one heck of a swipe next turn. He does seem like he wants to go for the biggest swipe ever seen by man. This one will be seen by space. Yeah, here is the Mighty Treader. That's going to be saying goodbye. That is. And in fact, you can see here, Razvod has set up so nicely for the swipe play into a coin wrath, which is just going to be absolutely diabolical for Fatal Cut Wombat here. Unless one of these... Um, oh, okay. That's an interesting one. I think I actually like that. Millhouse Mana Storm! Now you well, can swipe the Millhouse? Probably is going to swipe the Millhouse here. Um, there it is. Good play. He is indeed. He made sure he got the death round out. out the way. He did. And I'm there was also. To see the, what comes out of these web spinners. There was also the possibility. There's Savannah there. and the Double Falfa. Whoa, that is a pretty big draw for Fatal Wombat in the Savannah High Main. Massive. Now the. Mad Scientist will want to be traded here, because otherwise that Shade of Next Ramps will be a 4-3 next turn. And what Seeker is he going to pull out? He's got a Freezing Trap. Okay, so Maybe he's not what he wanted hand. at this point in, in, in time. But. Well, if he's going to be playing that big 4-6 taunt, that would be a pretty nice thing to see. I mean, you know, you got to balance. Do I want the extra bow durability, or do I just want to whack down my Savannah High Main right now? I, 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 I think I'd like to see the High Main even. But he's going to actually trade into the 4 6 here. That's interesting, because that freezing trap would have really hurt him. Oh, and now we see a Direwolf Alpha as well. I think I like Rath's the play. Out take out the, Rath the is going to come out. And then we're probably going to also see the Keeper of the Grove to hit for 2 damage, either onto the 2 2 or onto the mini little blob. But it is going to be onto the Direwolf Alpha. This game is proving to be around about as close as I had anticipated. However, purely I would say because of that Savannah High Main. If that had come out and been an angry chicken, it would have been game over. Them damn chickens. Now. There is going to be the trade here. Now, I don't know. He decided to play last turn. Rather than playing the Savannah High Main, he decided to play the bow. Which I thought was purely because he wanted the Freezing Traps to be procced. He then went on and hit, take out the 4-6 uh, Taunt. Now though, There's he decided and he has... A steady shot. So That's not, was... not what I expected at all there. He's decided now that he's going to turn into a Face Hunter a bit here. A Savage Roar now being drawn by the Druid. 4-6 What's he going to hit with first? He should play a Boombot into the slime. I think that has to be your play. 
that's definitely one turn, but however, we do see the possibility of a swipe as well. Now, if you swipe the 2 3, then you do get. Well. 2 1 1s. So, this is why I'd play a boom bot into the slime and hope it hits 3 on the haunted creeper. He's... Oh, I forgot about the freezing trap though. I think you might have been hoping that might have been an explosive trap to, tra to hit both of them. Now, if this here. Okay, so he's going to trade the boom bot. I think I quite like that. Yep. And if this boom bot now hits. Defender of. Oh, he's not even going to try. I it. see. Now he's going to use the swipe onto there and then he's going to trade the boom bot onto it. And. Clever play. And. Didn't do enough. <laughs> oh, one damage. RNG wow. isn't on his side. RNG. I'm, I'll have to have a word with him. Yeah. Word with him after the game. Yep. I've got not a doing deep well contact enough. with him. Yep. Get your FM 2015 uh, tactics out. I mean, Jesus loves me. As I showed Wes earlier. Or oh, Zilly. Don't, don't. Too soon, man. Too soon. Am I going to see another freezing trap here? Well, then, this could be intriguing. Now, we see the druid He's going very low. He's just himself in range of lethal. That's all this move, what that move was. Because even what? if he takes out the high main. Bye bye, <laughs> that boom bot is just not allowed to attack ever. He does have his taunt and he does have some healing, but you can't play both of them at the same time this turn. But even if he takes out the trades a high main for Dr. Boom, he's still gonna not, have eight damage on board, and that's without the two hero power. Not quite gonna be lethal though if he does heal here with the Ancient of War of Law, sorry. It would only be for, uh, sorry, 10 damage next turn. However, it is as good as lethal, I would say. So we see the excess mana here from the wild growth. Let's draw him a card. And a Lothar belt. So he goes for the taunt. Now, this is probably a slightly better play, in fact. And we see him taking out a 2 2 rather than the 6 5, so that he keeps his 7 3 on the board. That is lethal. And then he trades the 2-2 two -two into the 1-2. Yep. And the curse of the three games stream games continues, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yet Fatal again. Bombat takes game to this series to make it one all between him and Razverd in this round three game in the Syndicate Gaming Monday Mega Mega Monday Quest. I yeah, uh, Conquest, that's the one. Yeah, you got there somewhere. eventually. Well it's then. there. It's it's up here somewhere. There's a lot of stuff up there that I don't need to know. For sure. So we're going to see here now, fairly, a little bit of a break here. The two players are going to prepare themselves, and we are as well. Now, the round three games have are all being played right now, and there is one uh, one complete fixture. So we have here Fatal Wombat against Razverd. We then have Basic Ball, who beat LB Dutch Boy 2-1. And is facing Upvoter, who we just saw beat Ibarra 2-1. Maynard TCOX will play, play against Eric, who beat Average Joe. And he's also beaten Goth Girls, so maybe a player to keep an eye out on here as we head into our third game here. I'll continue. We have Slade facing off against Cuban. We have Vital Synthax, who beat Camillo 2-0. So that's two SG members out. 2-0, basically the only SG member now left in the tournament. And uh, Vital Syntax is playing against Charlie Witt. And then we have Areva against Westbrook. And Critex has beaten Little Gens. Lost two. two to... Sorry, yes, Crit Critex has lost 0 2 to Little Gens. And then we have Muzmuz against Thornstaff to end us up. The quarterfinals at stake here as we We're head into to last game three. 15 at the moment. <laughs> Indeed, we are. Reporting for duty. Now we do see a dragon paladin, ladies and gentlemen. I like Razvod already. Dragon dagger dagger din. Dragon dagger. Dragon din. Dragon din. Copyright nope. song. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pause. Please see a massive battle. Now this is a little bit different to the deck that I play, so well, I'm not giving away any clues to what my deck says, but massive battle here is probably gonna come down. I would imagine. However, I have been wrong. 
and I will continue to be so, it seems. Consecrate is going to be the turn 4 play, I am 85% sure. However, it all depends here on the actions that Fatal Wombat decides to take. A Void Walker, and he takes out one of them, and here's a Haunted Creeper, takes out the other one, and then this is surely just going to be a little, you know, how'd you do with the Knife Juggler taking out the 1-1 one -one or hitting face? I would take out the 1-1 one -one personally. Well, not myself, but I meant as in, you know, if I was playing. I You'd have him, would you? I'd let the Knife Juggler do the business for me. I'm no good at this wheeling dealing. So... It's interesting for me, because I've not actually seen any of these dragon cards, so... Okay, so we do dragon have a Dragon Consort. Dragon Consort, very overpowered card, if there are the right dragons in the deck, which I trust Razvert has. What I'll be interested in, it will be whether or not he plays Nefarian or not. I wouldn't say that Warlock is the best, like, has the best RNG for spells, but the two spells which Nefarian could grant Razvert would be interesting. And we see a True Silver taken. Sorry, coming out here, not taken out. I don't know, he might take his True Silver out somewhere. Friday night, you know. And we see the Defender of Argus going here in between the Knife Juggler and the. Oh, no, okay, he's decided. You're not going to touch my Juggler. And he's attacking to face. A second Consecrate now into the hand. And there we go. Two more hits onto face and a Consecration for good measure, taking out five possible damage of Fatal Wombats. Imp Gang Boss, almost an instant play there, but he did take a moment. Decides instead to tap and then play the Imp Gang Boss, which is a much, much more solid play here. Hovering the Razverd over his Equality Consecration combo. Now that... It's hovering over pretty much every card here, to be honest, so don't tell me I got this wrong. Because I know. <laughs> We're going to see possibly an Azure Drake for 3 mana, or a Hungry Dragon for 2. Implosion and Defender of Argus both being hovered here. It is the Implosion play. Oh, the RNG again. And 4 imps. Four out. imps. Well. I, I swear that card only does 4 damage because I've had it played against me at least 3 times and every time all 4 oh, minions have come out. Oh, now he will have wanted to have tapped first. However, he wouldn't have had enough mana, no, so he shouldn't be too angry at himself. <laughs> so you see a little more damage going to the face here. Now that is a pretty big Consecrate right now. However, it does leave the 2-4 up. And he's only got 7 mana. I always find this with my Paladin decks. I always have seven mana when I want to use my true silver and my consecrate at the same time. Just one more would do. One yep. more. One more. Like if he'd played an arcane golem, I'd be happy. <laughs> oh, now I, I I got a little bit confused momentarily there. I was thinking I was hearing hello, hello, hello. I am Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the consecrate come out anyway. So we're going to see a one-one imp and a two-two imp gang boss. And we're now going to go into the turn of Fatal Wombat, who's going to play the Knife Juggler. He's going to play as many low-cost minions as he possibly can here. The Echoing Ooze. I like this play here. He's going to coin out the Defender of Argus onto the Echoing Ooze, so he ends up having three taunts, and also the Imp Gang Boss getting the taunt as well. And this looks... And then a knife. Where's that knife going? Probably to the dragon. I'm wrong. No. Straight to face. Now, he could not... He has really... lethal. Easy. He couldn't really stop lethal, I don't think, either. Trade You've seen five two consecrates. Three, three. Which also creates a 1-1. One, one. And one, even if you make four, the... Six, yeah. Ten. The other peacekeeper's a 3-1. He could... Well, he could... I don't think it's possible for him to survive this. I think Razvad should probably just chuck in there the towel. There is one way 
to survive on one health, although you do have that knife juggler on the board. And that's not the play that I was thinking of. Ooh, I don't know if this saves him or not. I might do. And he's going to turn the knife juggler's attack into one? Indeed. However, that is a one, two, and that it. Oh! And he's also got the silence in hand to do the silencing onto the knife juggler. And he's also got Doom Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, Fatal Wombat with the comeback, making it 2 to 1 against Razverd, taking set game 2 and game 3 pretty comfortably, I'd say, and looking good now, heading into the quarterfinals of the Well cup. done to Fatal Wombat there. Indeed. And we're back to our faces. Back to the faces now. So then. Quick games. Quick Definitely. games. And that me that is actually only the second person qualified for the quarterfinals of the tournament at this stage. Which means now We're the last fourteen. Fourteen. And we don't know where to go. Uh, well, hopefully one of the games will finish <laughs> soon and we can just jump in. We can hope so. Because I think most of these have been going on for a while, so We would assume so. Hopefully not not long left in these. But we just keep keep refreshing and keep hoping. Indeed, we do. It's the only way we could do do it as um, as things stand. So another couple there of pretty decent um, games. We saw a couple of quick ones there, and we see the power of the uh, Imp Gang boss Zulok, which personally I'm you know I, I've not really ever been a fan of Zulok since the Undertaker nerf. What interests uh, me there was the Dragon seemed to struggle a lot. Very like, it slow. Was always, how can I survive? How can I survive? It was not, not how do I put damage on face? How do I take away his minions? It was, how do I survive? Make sure I don't die this turn. And it was always just delaying the inevitable. It was truly the reactive against the proactive there, I yeah, think. For sure. And a bit of a shame, I think we can say, that um, we are saying goodbye to Razvert already, but... Face of Wombat looking very strong in this tournament so far. We've watched two of his games. Both of them have been 2-1. We are the curse of the commentator. In human form. Flesh. This That's is flesh. It. Well, it used to be. And... Uh, it's going to be a tough... It's going to be a tough tournament now. We do have, as we say, 14 people left. And I think each of them has a literally an equal chance of going through here. There are probably only about... Four. It seems like, so far, we have had... Excuse you. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, making myself bored. Um, <laughs> oh, so we do have a result here as well. Vital Syntax has beaten Charlie Witt and will face the winner of Arava against Westbrook. Um, I think here we've really only seen one, two... Right, we've seen very few decks so far. We've seen a Druid deck. We've seen Midrange Hunter. We've seen Zulok. We've seen one or two Mech Mage games. And then we've also seen um, Grim Patron Warrior. Five decks is all I've seen, I think, so far in nine games. Possibly, possibly. Um, I've just been informed it's 1 0 to Basic Ball, so I'm going to jump into his game and see where, what's happening here. He's against Upvoter. Okay, so two people we have spoken of before. Yep, Our voter and we it's saw a players. Shaman against a Warrior, so. I can Let's shut go. Up now, apparently. So we're going to say. Say. Sound like a right say. <laughs> Sound like a boxing commentator right there. Indeed, I did. So you're gonna see basic ball against upvoter here. Who's it? One nil two. Could basic you ball. One up to basic ball. Who's playing the shaman? Now, I think he was talking to me about. No, this wasn't basic ball. He was talking to me about this deck. This was FTP. Now I MCT as well here from the warrior, which we did see earlier. Okay, so a lot of low-cost minions in the hand of Upvoter. Basic Ball's hand pretty much looks like Emperor Thorson has already had his ways with it. Ah, I do know which deck this is quite possibly of Basic Ball's here. I'm not going to say anything. Just that, you know, just keep your eyes on the board. This is a pretty interesting one, I think. He loves a bit of lightning and lava, doesn't he? he <laughs> does. Look in his hand, yeah. lightning bolt. A lava shock, a lava burst, and another lightning bolt, and a frost shock just to go along with it. Yeah, and a and crackle. Feral, feral spirit as well, you know. Those cold damn wolves. 
you know, winter's coming. And we see Ooh, now that... The photo's warrior is golden. It is Fancy. Indeed. It is indeed. 500 wins with warrior is definitely something you do whilst you're sleeping. Hex. It's a shame that there's no hex. lightning shock in... Uh, sorry, lightning storm in the hand of basically here. Be a perfect situation for it almost. He says, shut up giving yourself some more armor. Just become a frog. So we see the armor smith. Oh, spell the damage plus one, the perfect totem right there. Indeed. Now there is one little dragon I think we're going to see from Basic Will here. And uh, very correctly, incorrectly spelled sometimes as Maligos. We all know him pretty well as Maligod. Plus five spell damage is. Not bad. Oh, there goes the spell damage. Right back where it came from. Indeed. Now and will we see it? Boom getting another little buff. <laughs> you see a far sight. Um. He's gonna play it. What's he gonna get? Yeah, a far sight. Maligos. <laughs> I'm done. Aaron Jesus is over. strikes again. My country career is over. I'm just gonna sit and watch basic ball getting RNG all day. Well then. Now the thing is, he could play that for six mana, or he could play it for four. Ancestor's Call, ladies and gentlemen. And we see that what would come out here... Okay. It's interesting he's going to do the five damage first. He play it well, for four damage. Well, I thought he was going to do it himself then. Okay, so we see that going on to there. We're probably going to see a Lava Shock would be my assumption here. Just to get rid of those overload... Oh no, no that would be next turn, sorry. Okay, so we're going to see an Ancestor's Call more than likely next turn. And a Lava Shock. And then we're going to probably see a Crackle to face. Then we're going to see a couple of Lightning Bolts. I think there might be a Lethal in here somewhere. Oh, crazy. You know? Play it for four, and then he can Ooh, cast now the heal bot, all his spells. I, think I like the heal bot here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how much should that do? Eight. I don't think there's Lethal to be had. I was... Rather it's going to be very close. He could potentially. With that 5 plus spell damage. Plus 5 spell damage, so he plays it for 4. Well, not necessarily. He could play the anti kill bot and then cry. Oh, I think I like the uh, anti kill bot there, to be honest. Yeah, you know, he gets himself back to 20, gives him a little bit longer. Gets a taunt totem as well. It's very lucky. Oh, well. Shield Maiden. Ruining lives, stacking the armor. She did indeed, it seems. And now we're gonna see. Oh, sorry. Now we're gonna see a shield maiden. And the shield slam. <laughs> so I think at this point, Upvoter is a bit sick of this. You know, this basic ball. Um. Show, I would let's call it. And he just wants to say, you know what? I'm just gonna keep armoring up. And I think basic ball at this point is gonna say, well, you know what? This is cool it. and. Attack! What's it gonna be? It's gonna be the Cruel Taskmaster. It's not gonna be the Silence. It's gonna be a Crackle. Down well, it has four, to 11. eight. eight. Lightning Bolt for eight. Lava Shock for seven. And another Lightning Bolt Frost for eight. Shock for it's gonna six. be on 15, I think. No, he's gonna be on eight. Eight health. No, nine. <laughs> nine. Learn Math. to count. And he oh, quits. and the shaman quits because he had lethal there, I think. Now that might have been a mistake there from Basic Ball. He could play that shaman next time. However, he's just showing exactly what kind of shaman it is. Exactly. So that's one perhaps all. a perhaps a little bit of a uh... the curse of the two one strikes again. <laughs> Even when we join a game halfway through, we still manage to make it two one. We still do, yep. And uh, no new news to bring to you. Only that this game is still ongoing and the winner of this will play Fatal Wombat as you guys possibly know by now. You've stuck to the, it seems, the, so the we're down, upper We're realm. down to 13. Down to 13? Currently. Are we? Yeah. We've got three out. Well, th <laughs> we had 16 in round round three. Yes, sorry, yes, yes. yes three yes. out. So. I forgot that it uh, came through. Okay, so we're going to see Basic Ball on Hunter. And we're going to see another zoo look. Resident Sleeper. 
Tem um meu. Oh, basic pool. <laughs> mulligan. Basic pool. Just quit now, my friend. A mulligan. Oh, OP. my word. <laughs> if he put, oh, I thought he was gonna. Oh, that's even worse. Oh Imagine. my gosh. Now he is gonna be absolutely fuming. The worst thing he could get right now would be a mad scientist. Next mullet, next turn, if he gets it, if he gets it, I'm gonna call that he's gonna rage quit. I would concede. <laughs> I would have rage. I would have conceded after that hand. Unless you would. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, you can take out one damage with it. Okay, so he's gonna be happy, you know. Oh, he's not. The two mana pulls. <laughs> I think this is a face hunter. Except it actually instead looks like a secret hunter. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's stealth and secret and all that stuff, but you don't want to be laying that many traps. <laughs> you could just trap everything. Doesn't matter what he tries to do. Trap. He's trapped in the hellhole, which is Hearthstone. Add a little bit of alliteration in there. We're poets here! Oh, another two-mana drop. And it doesn't even have anything to combo with, apart from the snake trap. And what's really bad with playing the snake trap as well is the fact that you can't, because there's not enough mana. But also, <laughs> yeah, the, fact that, the fact that only three, or there's only three snake traps, and that could give uh, Upvoter here three imps from, the th from now the three, five taunt imp gang boss. Yeah, if I was basic, I'd be out right now. Done. He's just, yeah. he's just not getting any luck. There's a rip in pieces somewhere in chat, I'm sure, right now. I mean, he's keeping up the damage. Ripperoni. Considering is alright. But let's think about this for a second. Oh, no, he's not going to play the Nerubian. Well, things just got a little bit more painful in the world of basic ball. Have a couple of minions. Oh, just the oh, one. Basic. Basic, basic, basic. How I do not end the Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's two ways about it. <laughs> oh, well, wow. I suppose here, actually. Wolf. Nope. <laughs> no, just nope. nope. Just nope. I just realised that uh, a 4 4 has 4 health. Well, actually, no, 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 don't play that, don't play that, don't play that. You trade the 3 1 into the 3 3, you then play Explosive Trap and hit the 4 4 for 1. I would say misplay. I Wait, would say hang struggling. On. <laughs> I mean, why would he play the Snake Trap when there's no juggler? I think he's a little bit on tilt right now. I can just imagine his Belgian voice, the furious tones. <laughs> can the Belgians get angry? Well, they are very neutral, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. This was, yeah. If it was French, you'd have given up by now. Wow, um, please. So we're going to see we now... We do not discriminate against any nationalities here. No, not at all. We're just English, you know. The worst kind of people. Tuban has beaten Slade 2-1 to go through to the quad hat final. And he's... Yes. At the minute, he's not got, not got an opponent. He's got the winner of Eric and Maynard TK... T... C O X. It could be teacocks. It's probably teacocks. It probably yeah, is. I've seen that. Okay. He certainly doesn't seem like a certain... Oh, no, that was a really bad joke anyway. So! At least I'm noticing before I say him. Oh my gosh. I just feel so sorry for basic ball right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell him... I'm going to give him so much grief during our meeting next. I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to make the quick shot. I mean, I mean, to be honest here, right? He's doing pretty all right. Yep. If he gets a beast next turn, there's a, like a two-cost beast. So if he gets a spider, he wins. In fact, he wins anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Basic Balls won this. No matter what, Basic Ball has won this. If he wins this, I'm. I He's won it. There's no way about it. You quick shot the face. Three. Kill the command. Six. Use the weapon. Nine. 
Hero power, 11. Exact mana for that as well. Oh, oh. unless Malgarnis comes out here, which he will do! Oh, it's this fly! Oh, the flies! It's too much! It's oh, too much! Oh my gosh. Oh my word. I just. Oh, he had lethal. We noticed it so late. And he plays Loath Lip as well, just to stick the middle finger even deeper into the wounds of Basic Ball. Basic Ball, so unlucky there. He played that dude, so well. Dude, just, just, just the attack handles. the Malganis. Don't concede. Attack the Malganis. He is. <laughs> oh, my word. Basic that is so Ball, unfortunate. You legend. That could have been so, so clutch. Well, and that's Upvoter going through. Upvoter carries on in the tournament, and he will I face don't even... um, Fatal Wombat. I, mean... I don't even know what to do anymore. Like, this game just. Heartbreaker. Definite heartbreaker. I didn't even right, see. I'm going to I... try and move away from Fatal Wombat, so we're going to try and go somewhere else. Yeah, we will try that. Uh, we're purely just going to wait between... We've got to wait for a result. There's three different results that could come in right now. We just want yep. one of them. Just one. Meanwhile, we'll talk about that, that game. Um, how Basic managed to keep up is beyond Hero me. Power. He did Hero. well. He did did really, really I mean, well. And then he had lethal. It was there. It was there. And then just so cruelly taken away. I saw the lethal... And I realised that there was the Malganis in hand. I realised that there was the Void Caller there. Um, I missed how the how did the Malganis get played? The Void Caller. The Void Caller got killed by the explosive trap after it traded into the um, knife juggler. Yeah. And so the Void Caller's death rattle is obviously to uh, put into yeah. play a random demon from the hand, and there was only Malganis in the hand. Oh no. And I mean. <sighs> That is just. That was really, really rough for Basic Ball. I feel that sorry. That is just the game. Genuinely. Well, I really hope Basic Ball feels proud of himself for that effort because that was pretty astonishing. My word. Can't. Goodness me. This game. Too much. Just when you think you've got it all figured out. Yep. Nope. Nope. They haven't. <laughs> oh, man. Madness. Too much. Three much five me, boys. Three much five me. I'm going to retire from commentating after this. <laughs> I mean, surely, surely I didn't think that we could beat the um, bloodlust from last time. No. But I think we might have just done that. Probably. Very, very close. The Malganis just saved his life. The well, Malganis. essentially, the Voidwalker saved his life. <laughs> to be honest, his thoughtfulness to trade into the void, uh, the um, knife juggler, was actually the MVP play there. Yeah. Play of the day. P -p -p plays. There'll be some bills being paid with that skill. Probably. My oh my, what a game that was! Now we have got a few minutes here just to take a quick breather and reflect upon that game. That was mightily impressive there from both players, to be quite honest. Basically, so, very unlucky. I'm just going to go through the players that we got at the minute. We've got Fatal Wombat, who is a mod of Syndical Gaming. Indeed. Um, we have Upvoter, who's just put out a Syndical Gaming member. And he's uh, also put out DJ. Yeah, he's a very strong player. Very. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he goes all the way. I mean, from what I've seen of Fatal Wombat, we've seen two of his games. Um... I, I fully expect Vert to be in. I, I don't know if that's harsh or anything I like that. I think they may be running the same three decks. I, I think so, but the way Vert plays, the way he thinks... He's definitely a safe player, which <laughs> sometimes can bite you in the bum against aggro decks. But we'll wait and see on that result. We're not going to watch that game because we've watched so much of those two. Yep. Get sick of them already. Yeah, we yeah. have Maynard T T Cox against Eric. Now we've not seen either of these guys yet, uh, but Eric has put out Goth Girl, and then he went through to beat Average Joe. That could have been a do not show, but we would say it wasn't. And he did win two 0 He's going to put up a good fight against. I believe he did win that one two 0 actually. He's going to put up a good fight against Maynard. 
he is. And I mean, Eric's one of the only players left, actually, who has gotten, who didn't get a buy in the first round. Upvoter didn't as well. In fact, Fatal Wombat didn't. So actually, it seemed Maynard, it was better to not yeah, get a buy. Maynard almost. is the only player so far looking at things. Vital Synthax got Slade one. Slade got one. Tubin got one. Vital Synthax got a, didn't get didn't one. Didn't get a buy, no. It's about 50-50 here, so, you know, we've gone, we've had some good RNG with our brackets, I'll say. Yep. So then. So you're going to wait and see. Aretha's still in his game, so Aretha versus Westbrook is still ongoing. If you'd like to message one of them and see what stage they're at, we could always join halfway through, if they've still got a bit to go. That's, that's an option. But we are going to have our first semi-finalist coming through in... Probably about 20 minutes. I would be... like so, yes. And as I've predicted, it's going to be up voter, but pff, I'm going to be wrong. It's just it's just the way of the way <laughs> of the Hearthstone. The way of the RNG. Basically, I believe I've just sent a message, however, it doesn't seem to have gone through. If you're on busy, it doesn't. You have to go onto the battle.net thing. You see it there. There we go. I'm done. <laughs> Found out the same earlier, don't worry. So then. So the Aretha is in the second game here. Um, ooh, 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 we have a match. We have a match? Yep. Moose Moose has beaten Thornstaff 2 1, and we'll go through to face little, little Yens. So I guess that's the one we're going to go and have a look at. Okay. Is that Thornstaff, did you say? Or uh, Moose Moose and Little Yens. Do have we actually got... have they added us? <laughs> Is this a thing that's happened? No. Well then, let's not not going to see that game. Allow me to quickly double check that I might be able to add them. We'll have a quick check here. Meanwhile, Ryan is going to sing for you apparently. Nope. Um. So, one of them has added us. Just so you know, just goes by a different name. Oh right, yeah. Uh, oh, he hasn't added me. Nice. <laughs> and you can tell which one's the popular one between us. Yeah, we're missing one of them. Oh well, it looks like we're not going to see that game then. There's not a lot we can do about it. Um, if one of them's not added us, so we may actually end up going across to see my bright face. Apparently, Jesus, that's very, very bright. Uh, what have we got? We could wait for the Vital Syntax again, oh, uh, to play Aretha or Westbrook. Did you get reply with that score so we know what stage they're at? Uh, it was 1 to 0. To. I didn't actually know. He didn't tell me. Right. It's not my fault. Who did I send the message to? Aretha. Did I? Yes, I did. So I was waiting for Maynard T. Cox against Eric or Aretha against Westbrook. Oh, we don't actually have Westbrook, do we? Oh, yes, we do. Sorry, we do have Westbrook. Yeah. So we could jump into this one, possibly. Let's do it. Yeah, I think we should head into this one. So I should be able to find out who this is 1 0. Oh, well, it's they're in the second game. That's all I got told. So it's going to be 1 to 0, unless some maths went wrong somewhere. Right. Oh, we've just seen a concede from Westbrook. I think that might be 2 0. I just jumped in at the perfect time. Just yeah, I just saw the. Uh... Uh, we'll find out. If they go into a third one, we know it's 1 all. Yes. We apologise. Back to the faces. Um. One all. It is one all, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we are going to go and watch Aretha. This is going to be the final game now between Aretha and Westbrook. Indeed. So we're just waiting for these two to go into their third game. So it looked like it was a uh, mirror match up there between Warlocks. However, it was a zoo versus a handlock, and the zoo came out on top, as would be expected. Mm-hmm. That was attractive, ladies and gentlemen. It's because definitely. Worth it. I think you need that messy bed that's behind you. Who's 
You had one job. I will one. Fight with honor. <laughs> you know what? Whenever I hear the Uther, I will fight with honor. I just came, I just think of uh, the remix song of that. Alrighty ho. Yes. So. Anyway, but we do see now. Arathur. Um, Dragon Paladin against Mech Mage. Oh, look at that! Two brand new decks to us today. No, we've seen a Mech Mage already. And we've seen a Dragon. Oh, and yeah. we've seen a Dragon in yet. As hence being sarcastic. I definitely knew you were being sarcastic there. Really, I know. <laughs> anyway, away from our appalling sense of humour, and on to something a little bit more entertaining, ladies and gentlemen. It's of game three between Westbrook. Another and one. Another one. We joined it, and it went to game three. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I think we're gonna go two one all tournament. I'm willing to wait let to lay that down. To to wager and lay that down at the same time, right? I'm uh, yeah, I'm willing to, to weigh that. I'm weighing it down, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at doing that. <laughs> right, the okay, zombie chow comes into play. I hate the zombie chow, but as a mech mage it's really I guess it's kinda of useful because if it ever puts damage on your face you could just it's easy kill. to kill. <laughs> or you can just say, shut up and take my money. Like he does there. Ooh, Dude. you see a sneeze old shredder as well in this dragon. In. I wonder no, if it's just a dragon. I've actually seen, so I'm just going to have a look. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're noob for the night. That's me. Hopefully by next week, um, I'll be less newbie. And also... Legend. Kappa. The stream will be a little bit better. <laughs> a little As bit. Work. Yeah, work would be great. Okay, so we can see the Dragon Consort in the hand here of Aratha, but this does look like a very slightly typical Paladin deck. I mean, we don't really see um, many dragons anyway in the normal Paladin deck. However, mm. I would be interested to see whether this could be Alexstrasza, it could be Ysera, he could play Nefarian. There's a few um, dragons which could definitely be on the board here for Arthur. Well, not yet, but our Dragon Consort will certainly help them get there. So we're going to possibly see in... He's not got... The thing about Arthur's hand is he's got no nothing in the middle. He's got really cheap cards, and he's got Sneeds and Tyrion. And they're expensive. And it's like... Now... Okay, I see why he did that. And it actually does him some good there because that uh, Goblin Blast Mage would have gobbled and blasted him. Mm -hmm. So, I think a good play there, it could be said from Aratha. He does, as you say, have a very... Um, Hello! <laughs> he has a trench curve at the minute. He yeah. has the, he he has has the two there banks. There is no curve. <laughs> he has two banks and then just the pitfall in between. Well, there's one card that's in the middle that's not and really that's, what I'd want. Well... He could trade the 1-1 one, one in to the hello and consecrate. It does remove 5 damage from the board. It does, but it, I feel like he'd want it for something a bit... Well, heavier. I mean, we we get the fortune here word? of seeing the opponent's hand. I mean, every game would we be... We don't, because I'm going to what the opponent was about to do. <laughs> My bad. Oh! <laughs> well, and I mean, this consecration now is actually very, very useful for him. And I mean, Westbrook now is a little bit stuffed. But he does have the fortune of having that snow chugger, and it curves quite nicely into the mirror entity here, which could be very, very good for the mage, especially chugga, if chugga, chugga. an acolyte of pain comes down, which I wouldn't expect. Mirror I, entity. I kind of expect a big game hunter here. Yeah. Big game hunter in. Oh, he's going to play the acolyte, and that's going to get the mages the draw that they want. And I mean, he just has to ping it, and he gets one draw from it. Then he gets to trade it into the other guy's acolyte, or yeah. into the one-one there. Yep. The other one wouldn't be ideal. Not, perhaps the best play in the world there. It could and have I mean, been any secret. I mean, with a with a mech mage, oh. you could have a wide variety. So he's taking a chance, I think, on it not being a mirror entity. Well, to be honest, with Mech Mage, I've was. only ever seen mirror entity and maybe one version of Counterspell. But I've seen Counterspell more, than, more often. I think I've seen mirror entity once. It could be the current meta. I could have, you know, been away for a little while. But 
We do now see the consecration and the. Uh, it's not consecration a consecration. is not going to do a whole lot for him. It's going to just reinforce here, and that's just going to give yet another draw to the Acolyte of Pain. Oh no. Don't say it again. Hello. Is, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> He can't do that again. Get kicked off the stream. <laughs> um, Lysing thing. Lice? Lank? Yeah. No, no, purely because the fans will just be, well, not fans, but the viewers will just be like, oh my god. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting now into the stage of the game where Arthur could be taking over, but that, uh, as we were saying, that Acolyte of Pain is going to do a lot of work for Westbrook. Hello. 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 <laughs> Something you've I mean, taught me and I do it a lot now is when I play a Neutron, I always greet with Jaina first. Now, there is the slightly good play. Oh, I'd prefer to trade him with a two mana card. I mean, now he opens himself up to a very nice consecration. Well, he plays in a very nice consecration now. And the reason I'd like to have seen. Well, I suppose actually the two three is better. Ignore me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Consecrate. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter which order he does it in. Good consecration coming in, and now a trade into the 2 3, I would imagine, here, and then that does leave them open to a bit of a ping here, maybe? Well, actually, it's probably gonna be a Goblin Boss Mage, but I don't know. I would assume that that secret would be. Um, yeah. Now, the Frost Bolt could be used here onto the Acolyte of Plane. Of plane? Plain. It's not very, it's not very uh, colourful, so I just got the Acolyte of Plane. <laughs> um. Oh, here we go. Inch. Where's your RNG like? <laughs> oh, it's done four to that's face. That's actually lethal, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not. No, it's not. I forgot that mana was a thing. <laughs> yep, unfortunately. The well so. played there. The salty well played, and that's a shadow boxer. So, yeah, free nice shadow boxer. Yep. I don't know what that's going to do for him. Well, and a frost bolt to face. To stop the paladin from being able to buy, use that true silver champion. One more damage to face, and I think yeah, it'll be fireball, this and he just needs to, to West fireball and ping, and that's it. Where they, they all see the Chromagus there. Well, we do have the possibility here. Fireball of and ping Tyrion. is nothing. Not not something you can block. Tyrion. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, he's finished. just that's it. He's got to play like he hasn't got the fireball here, but we know he does. Oh, and now he's got to follow the rules. What a shame. Westbrook is the next participant. Yep, in Aretha the is heading Monday out. Monday Conquest Waterfiles. And he'll face. Scrolls down. He'll face, against, he'll face off against Vital Synthax for a place in the semi finals. Don't forget, guys, if you want to take part in this next week, then head on to the forums. I thought he was going to BM him then. It looked like he was going to. Head on to the forums over at cynical gaming.com. And you can sign up for the next week's tournament as soon as it is released. Re as soon as it is released during the coming week. So we hope you've enjoyed this stream so far, guys. Out. If you have, don't forget to hit that follow button. And it is indeed, as Ryan said, Aretha out of this tournament. Well played to him. Good to see another new name here. And now we have Westbrook against Vital Syntax. You could always follow that through if you wanted. We could do. Um, we'll have a quick double check of the bracket elsewhere and we have Maynard T. Cox playing off against Tuban, Fatal Wombat up against Upvoter, Vital Syntax will be playing against Westbrook and Little Yens will be playing Muzmuz. Muzzy Muz. All of those for places in the semi-final. Oh that's Eric out, ouch. Eric is out, yes indeed. Those beatings of average Joe and Goth Girl taking time tonight. And he's not had much of a break until now. He goes out 2-1 to Maynard T. Cox. He's got a very long break now. He has. So we're down to our last night. No, eight. Seven. It is eight. Eight. It is eight. It is eight, yes. Down to the last eight. The last eight, boys. For the first we need place. some Champions League music right now, I feel. I could sing, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I think there should be a thank you from everyone in the chat for that. <laughs> so wait on Vital Syntax and Westbrook to jump into the next game. Um, 
what what that demonstrates for me is the mech mage is very strong. Like sorry, really, say that again. That last game demonstrated for me that the mech mage is really strong. Yes. Like yeah. If you Especially... can get enough damage down quick and you get the right draws, yeah. it's, it's GG. Like I found that in ranked, uh, playing against, I think only really a priest and a druid have slowed me down uh, to the point where I just didn't matter what I drew, I was dead. It's because of the proactive. Exactly. The active. Um, and for me, it seems to be almost too powerful. What's I mean, that? I haven't, it hasn't, the mech mage, I haven't even factored in, like, I haven't touched Dragon Jet, and I don't know if I will for a while because I'm quite happy with the decks I've got at the minute. But I, I don't know. It, it's not often that you'll come up against a priest in these tournaments. Well, we no. haven't seen one yet today. We have seen one. Oh, was it one? Yeah. Yes, and yeah. I think we've seen a couple of druids. So if you if you really fancy your look, just take a mech mage into a, into a tournament. Yeah. Chances sure. are you're gonna have a favourable matchup and. I mean, it was the only game I won yesterday. I played in the Gfinity qualifiers yesterday, and uh, the one game I won out of my first game against someone fr who went to DreamHack uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, was as a mech mage, and I literally pooped on him when I had four minions on the board on turn two. Exactly. It's it's a fun deck to play as well. Oh, it's the other guy. If he doesn't get draws, you sat there permanently in his face with like four or five mechs, and there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah, he's basically your Manny Pacquiao. You you know you're throwing the punches and he's just there trying to hug you, you yep. know what I mean? He, he is good topical topical joke there. I know. <laughs> Very good. Ten out of ten would tell again. So we're waiting now for the. I think the syntax is making changes to his deck. <laughs> no, that is allowed. It's allowed, but I'm just wondering if he's tuned into the end of that game and saw Westbrook's running. It's a possibility, but it could just be the fact he... Well, obviously Westbrook has the opportunity to do the same. Yes, of course, yes. He but could potentially be waiting for the matchup. He could just... It, I mean, it could actually be a bad thing for Vital Syntax here. Yeah, yeah, yeah overthink it and yep. take Break, out maybe things. Maybe throws and... in a Kazan Mystic and then all of a sudden three different decks are played by Westbrook next game. Yeah. That's the thing. You don't, even if you know what the other guy's playing, you don't know what he's playing. No. It's because you just pull anything out. I mean, you can I mean I've you... seen the speed some people make decks as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a good 20 seconds and they've clicked 30 cards into their decks. Like, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> I do it all the time, but then I take about half an hour to refine them. Yeah, but so. I'm talking about the people who win. So. I'll shut up then. <laughs> I know, Maynard Teacox has just gone into his game of Tuvan. We could watch that one, I think. I want to watch that one. Yeah, let's do it. We have, let's do it. We have them both, I believe. Yes. Um, but I'll let Ryan quickly run you through this first few steps of this game as I head off to just one moment into a... Oh, okay, I'm just going to go and sleep for a few hours. This, this one's yours, Ryan. <laughs> So, <laughs> we have Warrior versus Warrior. This is going to be a long game. Both armoring up for days. <laughs> well then, I almost wish we hadn't tuned into this one. But alas, we're here now, so we might as well um, do so. And you can see here that Maynard has the coin. So he has an extra draw as well. I think out of the two, Tubin's probably come out with the a favourable, favourable mulligans. Anyway, he's got the cheap mulligans, is basically what I'm saying there. Um, looking at his cards, maybe not. The cool tax master, I wouldn't expect to see just yet. Yep, just the armour. I think. This, oh, well. we have to a the theme. Warrior matchup. We have a theme here. Hero power, hero power, hero power, hero power, hero power. Die. Yeah. There is, of course, a, the, sh uh, the shield slam. So, as much as they build up and build up armor, it could just bang, <laughs> gone. Bang, and the dirt is gone. There we go. Acolyte of pain. And executes all round at the moment. 
so we do seem to have on the uh, Tuban side, we do seem to have the casual control warrior, and on Maynard Teacock's side, we seem to have the um, the newer Grim Patron deck. And we do also I see, see that arc light banner, arc light. Down to the last eight though. This is mad. This is quite been quite a quick one, I think. It's Maybe definitely gone faster than previous ones. We've been on ones. for two and a half odd hours. So. Indeed. Yeah, not bad. Um, I think that's about a rough estimation for how long this game is going to run on for, though. Unfortunately. And I'm um, 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 uh. Oh, is there something going on in your game? Yeah, things are happening, but not a whole lot's actually happening. Don't worry, it's just the fact that my game has decided to freeze again. That's awesome news. And he's going to hit T2 with face. Good trade. Oh, and he's going to proc the frothing berserker. Frothing. Froth <laughs> I can't speak. Frothing <laughs> berserker. Okay, and I am back. There's the grim patron in the hand there of Thank Maynard. <laughs> he has pulled the card his deck was made for. And there are two lots of five uh, armor in the hand of Tuban here. I mean, next turn he has the possibility of... Uh, well, he could just shield slam now, to be quite honest. And I mean, in, he knows now that it's going to be a grim patron deck more than likely. And the thing is, you know, if he shield slams that now, you know, what else does he need to shield slam later, really? There's not that much. No. I mean, he's not going to take any damage because of his armor. He's going to lose three, uh, three of his armor. But at the end of the day, that's all warriors are. <laughs> well, if shield slam, he wouldn't lose any. That's what I, I knew that. <laughs> of course. I thought the card did something different. Oh well. Shield Maiden. Is he gonna shield Shield Maiden into Shield Slam Face? Can you do that? Oh no, you can't do that. Oh, it's a minion. Face, no. Right. I think he's just armoring up for the fun of armoring up. Well, there's gonna be a slam here. Go draw a card out of it. Another Fotting Berserker. And this makes for a very interesting next turn. He does still hold the coin. I hadn't noticed that much. So there is the possibility here that Maynard T. Cox next turn can play the Grim Patron into the Warsong Commander. Well, the, sorry, the Warsong Commander into the Grim Patron. He then uses his weapon so that he gets two Grim Patrons, which is then going to even further buff this 5 4 here. But all of that depends on whether it stays alive. And I tell you what, that, just, that thing just got pulverized. Get shrimped, mate. The Grim Patron's mm. coming out. I wouldn't like to see the Grim Patron on its own. Or maybe actually. Yes, I would. Um, rip, um, you can play Inner Rage onto it, and you can also play Whirlwind, and also the weapon kills it. Wow. Surely that's going to be his idea. I like. I, I can see it here. Look, he plays the inner rage. Yep. He then plays the whirlwind, and he can also even coin out a battle rage, which is gonna just gonna draw him a crap ton of cards. Everyone, get in! Oh, he's not gonna waste the whirlwind. Okay. Get in here. Battle rage, full taskmaster, and a gromash yellow scream. However, no, he's not. I thought he was gonna. Do something else there. There are two executes in the hand here. There is also a fiery war axe, so there could only, there might even be just one uh, grim patron on grim. Uh, sorry, on <laughs> on grim, on Maynard T. Cox's side of play here. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. It'd be a th full health three three, 
So the Cruel Taskmaster into Whirlwind does still create four of them, and if he plays the Warsong Commander f the first, then, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. In fact, that may, you may even be able to play the Frothing Berserker as well. I'm starting to see a lot more of Grim Patron uh, style lethals now. Now I've seen people play it a little bit more with the uh, Frothing Berserker. I, yeah, I see. I see how to play it a bit better. Thank you guys. I love you. So we are going to see the um, hit here. Hit here. And the double execute coming out. Yeah, as that I was had predicted. I wouldn't be surprised to see a heal, uh, sorry, an armor up, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see the Acolyte of Pain. We see the shield. No true surprise there. Very nearly an overdraw here, so may not need to be careful, oh my Jesus! That is another whirlwind, ladies and gentlemen. Frothing Berserker now. Then he's got a Cruel Taskmaster, the 3 3. Oh my god, this is just. This is wrecking my brains. Do you Cruel Taskmaster or do you Double Whirlwind? Double Whirlwind means that you have a full board. And cruel Taskmaster oh, means. No, you can't believe. I mean, the thing is, he doesn't have lethal yet, so he probably doesn't want to use both of the uh, whirlwinds, especially when he's got Gromash Hellscream in his hand as well. Everyone. Get in here! Get in here. Craziest deck ever. He's going to play one of the whirlwinds, okay. I, I'm down with that. I mean, oh dear. he's going to have 8-4, a 5-1, a 3-2, a 3-2, uh, sorry, a 3-3, three, three, a 3-3, three, three, and a 2-1. So there's everyone, gonna be get in here. I think everyone is in here right by no, by now. You know. <laughs> Jesus, Grim Patron, please shut up. <laughs> he just wants everyone in in here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think he's telling us. Oh, 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 draw. However, however, it. we do also see the de the guaranteed ten damage here. From uh, main RT cults with the Gromash Shell Scream into Whirlwind. If this is the 8 4, no, it's not the 8 3, sorry. It's the full health Grim Patron, which doesn't actually matter. Three more damage. It's a dead here. Grim Patron. It is. Two health is all he, two damage is all he needs to find. It is. Emperor Thorison on my screen, which is apparently a Warlock card costing zero mana. That is Fantastic. so cheek. Yep, I know. He's and not gonna, uh, he's not gonna my game has again screen. frozen. So everything is cheap as hell now. Whirlwind's free. Execute's free. Blood Mains Thalness is one mana. Battle Rage is also one mana. And Grey Mash is seven. So he can play all of them next hand if he wants to. Ragnaros comes out. Arm up a little bit. And hope. That's game. That's game. He's oh, going to Gromash House Scream into Whirlwind, charge and hit with 5-5. Five five. Yep. I'm sorry, my friend. And there was a Dr. Boom as well. So we do know that Tubin is playing this control style warrior. And Maynard T. Cox will not be able to play his Grim Patron Warrior, which he looks very, very strong on. And I mean, I really, really did enjoy playing with the Grim Patron Warrior, and I may have to revisit it very shortly because it's a lot of fun, that deck. I mean, you know, there have yeah. been these kind of four fun decks been played before, uh, but this is a really good four fun deck. It looks... it's interesting because it looks as if it you need... it's very reliant. Yes, it's, yes. I just feel aware that it's... it's you have to get the right draw. You have to well, multiple draws. That's that's the main problem. And you gotta hope they don't have a board clear or something that could just ruin your deck at once. Indeed. I mean, you have to try and play around that sort of stuff, but it's sometimes you won't see X play, and you play everything that you think I can win next turn, and then all of a sudden the game flips and it's and you're dead because there's nothing else you can do with that deck. Indeed, that is one issue with it. We're going into our next game now, and Tubin is keeping with the Control Warrior, and he has now a much more favourable uh, opponent, I guess, in Maynard T. Cox's Hunter. So we should see 
a better game here for Tube and getting to show off the armorful deck. An interesting keep there. I didn't. I, I don't know if he mulligans to in the Savannah High Main or where he just didn't get it away. I, my game didn't update quick enough to tell you. No, that was a strange one. I just had a oh, card flying around awesome. my screen for a minute. Oh, they love doing that. It's like a Harry Potter scene. And we're going to now see the web spinner into its spider sister.